Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to this episode of TensorFlow Meets. And it's a very special episode that we're recording from home. And I have the pleasure of having Catherine Nelson and Hannes Hapke with me. And Catherine, Hannes, you were supposed to be uh, presenting at the TensorFlow Dev Summit back in March. Unfortunately, that couldn't happen. Um, so we're just really delighted to have you on video now to come and talk about what you've been working on. But before we get to that, could you just introduce yourselves, please? Hi, I'm Catherine. I'm a senior data scientist at Concur Labs. I'm particularly interested in machine learning model analysis and fairness and data privacy. I originally trained as a geophysicist, but about five years ago, I decided to make a career change and jumped into data science. And it's been a really good move for me. Nice. Well, it's great to have more physicists in this business. I originally trained as a physicist too, though not a geophysicist. So, uh, so welcome. Welcome to machine learning. And, and how about Hannes? How about you? Hi, I'm Hannes. Um, I'm like Catherine. I'm a senior data scientist at Conqueror Labs. Um, I'm located in Portland, Oregon. And like her, like I was I'm really fascinated with machine learning many years ago and um, sort of stumbled into the field of machine learning engineering. And um, I'm really excited about this. And yeah, happy to talk today about machine learning engineering. So at TensorFlow Meets, we really love to meet with people from the community and talk about some of the great and interesting things that you're doing with machine learning. But before we get to like one of the great projects that you're working on, you've mentioned that you work at Concur Labs. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I've been in the Concur Labs team for about two years now, and it's a small team that drives innovation at SAP Concur, which is SAP's business travel and expense tool. And what we do there is we evaluate new technologies and we recommend them to the rest of the company. So we we try things out, we um, explore what new technologies are around. Um, in the past, we've looked at um, building Concur travel and expense on alternative interfaces such as Slack, Outlook, Alexa, and we've even made it possible to file your expenses from a car. And last Last couple of years, we've had a big focus on machine learning, and we're um, trying to recommend machine learning tools and techniques to the rest of SAP Concur. So one of the things you mentioned in that is like really machine learning pipelines. And I know you've both written a book around machine learning pipelines. So could you tell us all about it? And what exactly is a machine learning pipeline? So in machine learning um, pipelines, we want to close the gap between uh, from the machine learning experiments to bring those models to production. We have seen a lot of publications around machine learning frameworks and machine learning techniques um, like deep learning and things like this. But we missed uh, a publication which was just focusing on all the things we as data scientists and machine learning engineers have to know to bring a model from an idea into um, like the production environment what we use at Conqueror. Um, and that's something we want to close with with that publication. And we're very happy that we can collaborate with O'Reilly on this. And we're very close in um, closing this publication. It's really nice that um, a lot of the times what I see, and when I'm particularly in learning and machine learning stuff, is you tend to see you train a model, you take a look at the accuracy of the model, or you take a look at the model's loss, and hey, the loss is acceptable, and then you declare victory and walk on. But of course, like, you know, really getting something into production, getting something usable is a lot more than that. And this seems to be what you're really diving into in this book. That's exactly where our book starts, is where, where you get to the point where you have a model that you're happy with. That's where we pick up. We don't cover the training process or the, your choice of model architecture, but we say, I've got a machine learning model. Now what? What do I do next? How do I turn that into a smooth production system? How do I check that my input data is going to be in the right format? How do I check that there's no anomalies, that nothing's fallen over? And how do I smoothly train that model? And how do I have an automated system that I don't have to sit there and watch and monitor all the time? Yeah, and uh, one of the things I read when I was reading the blurb of the book that the publishers provided, and I'm going to read it, it says uh, that the authors walk you through the steps of automating a machine learning pipeline using the TensorFlow ecosystem. You'll learn the techniques and tools that will cut deployment time from days to minutes so that you can focus on developing new models rather than maintaining legacy systems. That sounds really, really valuable. There's so much in there, but can you tell us a little bit about that? Like maybe start with the automation part of it. Yeah, the, the whole goal of the automation is to free up the data scientists to focus on uh, innovation and new models instead of maintaining those old ones. It's a scaling problem, right? Um, we, we produce a wonderful machine learning model, but they continuously need to be updated. But we as data scientists and machine learning engineers, we simply can't focus on all the old models. So we need to invest a little bit of time of like, how can we automate those pipelines 
so that those models can continuously be updated and, and so that they stay current. Um, and that's what we're trying to walk the, the reader through with this, with this book. Um, at the same time, when we talk about automation, we will focus on, we're focusing on reproducibility and reducing bugs in the machine learning process. Reproducibility and reducing bugs, that's really where the, <laughs> that's where the rubber hits the road, right? <laughs> um, so one of the things is that you've settled on using TensorFlow and TFX in particular for this book. And could you tell us why and what led you to that? Well, when we were deciding what framework to use, we looked at the various options and TensorFlow has the largest ecosystem. There's just so many useful tools that we, we can use in in a book, so everything from um, things like TensorFlow model analysis to TensorFlow privacy, and there's there's not really any other framework right now that has such a huge landscape of useful tools that we can build into a production system. I can see that both of you have a lot of experience in building production systems. And one of the things that I always love to hear from people is like funny war stories that they've had of things that maybe have gone wrong or interesting bugs that you've hit. Is Have you encountered anything? Yeah, I think we have a funny war story. I was uh, a couple of years ago, I was working with a wonderful machine learning engineer um, and we split up a, a rewrite of a machine learning model. He was the data scientist. I was the machine learning engineer was focusing on uh, the parts Catherine was just describing sort of like taking care of the data going into the model and then everything happening afterwards. Um, and as part of that machine learning pipeline, we trained our own word of model. Um, it was domain specific. And I retrained the model and shipped it. Um, but I forgot to mention this to uh, my, my good colleague. And um, we, we shipped the whole new model out into production. And we noticed something weird happening. Everything worked fine, but the predictions were kind of weird. and. Then started, people started complaining and we started debugging the system, but it was like really crazy. And after a week, it just occurred to me, it was like, wait a second, did I send that email? Um, did I notify him that we we, <laughs> we changed the word of model? Um, of course, the email was still in my draft inbox and that was the whole root cause. Um, but afterwards, we, we looked into things of how can we avoid those situations? And um, we stumbled across TensorFlow Transform, which um, lets us generate um, like pre-processing steps as a graph, and then we can attach them together with our model graph and sh um, serve them as one artifact. And the wonderful thing is, this is the remedy to get around those situations that basically the pre-processing gets out of line with the model itself. And that really hooked me onto the whole TFX story. And um, yeah, I would get, that was more or less the starting point of the publication, I would say. That, that's a great story. I often wor worry that I kind of sent too much email. Now I realize maybe I don't. <laughs> you can never have too many emails in a situation like that one. So cool. Now back to the book and this book that you're working on that I'm just curious, like what what's it been like to write it? How's the process been, particularly with multiple people working together? I think um, we started uh, with this publication, I would say almost 20 months ago. Um, that was when we originally submitted a proposal to O'Reilly when we, we thought, hey, all these learnings from um, how to work with TensorFlow Transform and TensorFlow Serving, how do we build pipelines out of this? Um, that was our starting point. Um, last year in spring, I think the context or the, the text of the book has changed and we focused on, on different libraries. Um, also, co coincidentally, TFX was published in basically um, the glue code between those components became all of a sudden open source. And um, we didn't have to introduce our own system anymore. Um, but that was uh, a really good sort of turning point. Um, but then also a lot of other libraries came out where, uh, which we thought would really would be really helpful. Like we, as Kelsey mentioned earlier, we looked into um, TF privacy or um, like um, TF federated and things like this. Nice, nice. And, and when you uh, decided to update the book, I hope you emailed the publisher to let them know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I still get grief from, um, from my friend for that mistake. Oh, that's perfect. So, so uh, when will the book be available? And I'm curious to read some of it myself. I've been struggling with, like, for example, just optimizing a model for TF serving, and I'd love to read uh, what, what your advice is. And for other people to get the same type of advice. Uh, when's this going to be out there? Well, you can read the draft versions of some of the chapters right now on the O'Reilly online platform. We're just finalizing 
the writing of the book. We should be finished in the next month or so. Um, the final digital version will be available late June and the physical print book later this year, August or September. Wow. Excited to see it. And uh, for links for that and links for the early access stuff we can put in the description for this video so folks can follow them. So Catherine, Hannes, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. It's been really fun chatting with you. Some great stories and I'm really looking forward to your book. So from Tense Flow Meets, I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you, Lawrence. Thanks, Lawrence.